Well, good morning, Dr. De La Rosa. Thank you for joining us here live Thank in you. Dallas, Texas. Thank you for having me. It's my joy to have you on the Valder BB Show. I'm going to ask my audience uh, to go on Facebook and send me some questions. Tell me about what you know about tooth decay in children. Well, first of all, Valder, it is the one of the top chronic diseases in our country. It's five times more common than asthma, so it is still a huge burden for our children. Uh, in the state of Texas, there was a study uh, that said that 43% of kids had untreated decay or had experienced decay, and that's just way too much. And, and dental decay is preventable too, Valder, so that's the other part of the message, is we really need to start early to help prevent dental decay. And I agree with that, but you know, living in a society where medicine is reactive rather than proactive, you know, just even thinking of my own dental plan, there's so many gaps in it, doctor. It, and I can understand maybe if you aren't on a plan such as chips or something like that and, and, and have a limited income, I can see how it can be a challenge for people. It's a huge challenge, and you're absolutely right. But the message in that, though, is prevention. Oh, and, and healthcare is expensive. We know that. But, but prevention is really cost-effective. And with dental disease, there are a lot of simple things that we can do preventatively that can help reduce the cost of it and also the experience of it. So, for instance, our academy really pushes that age one dental visit. So by age, by the first birthday, we want to see our children and our families in our office so we can give them a lot of tips on education, on how to brush, how to floss, uh, and how to prevent dental decay. That's good. That is really good. Also, too, I'm sure somewhere we're going to talk about eating. Oh, yes, yeah, we, we, yes, we have to. Because it's not only what we eat, it's also when we eat. In other words, we don't want our kids to graze, if you will. So that little sippy cup following us around all day long with juice in it or something else in it, that's not what we want to do. We want to make sure we have a snack and make it a good snack at a set time so that we avoid the grazing. Because you know, you need three things to get decay. You need a tooth, you need a substrate, which is food and drink that we consume, and you need bacteria. Well, if you can be a little more, a little smarter with how we do our snacking and what we consume on, and we do our good prevention, and we can remove the plaque and the bacteria from the teeth, we can help prevent that dental decay, Valor. Okay. What role does parents play in mimicking this behavior? You know, not that do as I say. That yeah. Do we have to do as we want them to do? Oh, you absolutely do. And it has to be less of a chore and more fun. Uh, I'm a father of twins, so for us, all four of us were in the bathroom at the same time. So we'd brush my son's teeth and I'd brush my daughter's teeth. And it, it has to be an engagement like that. If you go to our website, mychildrensteeth.org, we have so many resources about how to engage with our kids and helping them get good preventive care. Also, we have our Mouth Monster campaign, which is really fun. Uh, we have some good characters and, and, and stories that we can give to our kids that help them get good dental health. Why do we have such a high number of, of, of children with decay? And I think you said it at the beginning, but why is the number so high? Well, I think part of the reason it's so high is because of the common myth that, oh, they're baby teeth. They're just going to fall out anyway. Why do we have to take care of those? Well, it's vitally important that we take care of our baby teeth because that is really a, a, a forecast for what the dental experience will be later on in life. And we need our baby teeth for jaw development, for eating, for speech. And you know, a lot of children that have chronic untreated decay have more ear infections, more sinus infections. So we know there's that connection as well. So I really feel like it's that perhaps lack of understanding or perception that, well, baby teeth just are not important. And for us as pediatric dental specialists, that couldn't be further from the truth. All right, I got a Facebook question here, and sure. this question comes from Wednesday. She wants to know, when you have multiple children, how, well, you said it a little bit, how to get them to brush that last time before they go to bed. Right. And again, it's that establishment of the routine and have fun. And you know, there's so many good products out there today with music and, and timers and whatnot that it just has to be part of that, that routine. You know, try to make it less mature. And listen, I know, I, like I say, I was a father of twins, so families today have very, very busy and active lifestyles, but we, we have to make it a priority. All right, then I'm going to take one more Facebook question, and this comes from Anderson. And Anderson wants to know is how long should you brush? 
two minutes twice a day. That's our message. That's our marketing message. Two minutes twice a day. And when teeth come in, as soon as there's contact there, you can't really brush in between teeth that are touching. So that's when you want to start the flossing. All right, then, okay. and because that's my next question. That's my next question from Art. Art wants to know when is flossing? When do you start flossing with children? Lead in. Right, and that's when those teeth come in. And if there's no if there's no space between them, that's when you want to start. And usually at that young age, infants and toddlers, we have so many little neat devices like the little floss sticks and the floss holders that help you get in between the teeth easily, more easily than if you're wrapping the floss around your fingers. Thank you, Dan LaRosa. Where would you send my audience on the uh, net so they can get more information? Because they've obviously got a lot of questions. Right. MyChildrensTeeth.org is our, is our uh, website. And, of course, if you call the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, we can get you a local pediatric dentist in your area that can answer all your questions, Valor. Dr. Dan LaRosa, thank you for talking to us. That was exciting. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.